Hi folks, welcome back to the SFOM channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video I wanted to discuss Fire Capture. And Fire Capture is an open source, freely downloadable software program that you can use to image the moon and the planets within our own solar system. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Wido Oermans and I'm an amateur astrophotographer living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, where I perform my astrophotography. And on my channel I share equipment reviews and tutorials on how to capture and post-process your astrophotography pictures. So if you like that kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. I would highly appreciate that. And let's move on with the video. Actually, I'm a little bit anxious in making this video because uh, yeah, there are a couple of things. So first of all, uh, I thought what better way is there to show you fire capture than uh, uh, to show you fire capture while actually using it to image the moon or one of the planets in our solar system. So I'm intent, I intend to do that. Uh, and tonight we will have a penumbral lunar eclipse. So today is Friday the 10th of January and tonight we will have a penumbral eclipse. I know the, the full eclipse will be at 8 o'clock central European time. So I'm really hoping to be able to capture that um, while also showing you fire capture. Uh, but there, of course there are a couple of issues. Uh, it's cloudy outside and uh, maybe it will be clear tonight but it's not, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's not looking good uh, right now. And uh, also the moon, I know that uh, the lunar eclipse will happen at 8 o'clock Central European time, but the moon will be at 20 or 21 uh, degrees uh, um, in the sky. And I have this really big building uh, towards the east of my, uh, my terrace where I'm imaging. So I'm hoping that the moon has cleared that building and that I will be able to capture the penumbral lunar eclipse. So I'm hoping to find that out tonight and share all this information with you in this video. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. So uh, guys, we are looking at the penumbral lunar eclipse. Uh, this is a, a recording of uh, 10 past 8 Central European time. So you see here that the lunar eclipse is at its height. And so yeah, as you can see, I'm using fire capture to capture the penumbral lunar eclipse. And um, yeah, I decided to make a video on fire capture by giving you uh, basically nine tips on uh, yeah, how to uh, download the program, how to install it and uh, how to use it. And at the end I will also share uh, my uh, end result of the penumbral lunar eclipse. We will compare the penumbral lunar eclipse picture to a full, to the, the normal full moon that you uh, see normally when uh, you are imaging a full moon. So yeah, let's get into the first uh, tip on uh, what you can do with fire capture. And the first thing that you uh, that you can see right here is that you can go to the website firecapture.de and uh, you can click on download. And there you will find uh, yeah, different platforms. So we have a Windows download, an uh, iOS uh, download and so on. So you can choose the platform that, that you work with. And on the left hand side in the column, the first column, you can see the cameras, uh, the camera types that are supported for each of the versions. So simply click on the platform that you use uh, and you can also see here there are some older versions that are available for download but uh, yeah simply click on the version that you need uh, for your download and then you have to answer a very complicated uh, question how uh, much is 5 plus 4 and uh, um, if you answer that correctly you will get this download it is a zip file so you will need to go to the folder where you downloaded uh, fire capture and then you have to click on uh, unzip uh, I'm sure you know how it works. So you have to unzip the file into the specific folder that you want to uh, to install Fire Capture in. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, that's what you need to do to get Fire Capture on your computer. I also want to ask you just give a small donation to the person that uh, developed actually Fire Capture because uh, yeah, it's a completely freely downloadable software program and it's really uh, uh, nice to uh, to have uh, these kind of things freely uh, at our disposal. So uh, if you want, go to the website firecapture.de and download uh, uh, download <laughs> and to donate a small amount of money to uh, to this person. So yeah, tip number two will be uh, how to start fire capture. So simply go to the folder where you installed fire capture in 
And uh, yeah, you click on fire capture dot exe, and then you need to uh, check uh, the or to click on the camera that you want to use for uh, imaging or video. And in my case, uh, you saw that I had a ZW0120 as a guide cam and the ZW0178 as my imaging camera for uh, tonight. So uh, yeah, you can then click on the camera that you will use for imaging or video. And uh, as you can see here, then fire capture opens and it will give you immediately a live view of what the camera is uh, is capturing so uh, you can see here that i'm using next remote to center the loon, uh, loon <laughs> the moon in the field of view and uh, yeah that's the second tip so uh, let's move on to the third one so the third tip is to set your region of interest. So what you can see here is that I'm left clicking on my mouse and I'm dragging uh, my mouse across the screen and you will see this red uh, rectangle as a consequence. And um, yeah, you can then let go of your mouse button and then uh, you can click on OK. And then you will actually set your region of interest, uh, meaning that only this part of your field of view will be captured when you are, for instance, making a video. And the main advantage of doing this is that you you will end up with a less space or a less uh, a big uh, uh, file on your hard drive when you start to uh, capture the moon in this case and to make a video. So yeah, let's move on to the next tip. So the fourth tip is when you uh, are in the floating menu and you go all the way down and you click on this uh, little radar button, radar button. Uh, in settings then you will get uh, to this menu and it will show you all of the the general settings that you can uh, adjust in fire capture pretty important so one of the things is uh, this is a small thing but i'm clicking on layout here and you can see we have uh, vertical and horizontal toolbar um, um, icons actually uh, that are displayed uh, on the capturing screen and uh, yeah you can just uh, reorder these uh, icons any way you like where you can add or uh, delete items from that horizontal and also from the vertical uh, menu uh, bars that you can see uh, on the capturing screen so um, that's pretty interesting and uh, next let's uh, talk about hardware so the next step will be when you go to hardware and telescope uh, this is an advanced feature actually but you can uh, click on initialize interface and then uh, yeah when you you are already used to auto guide and you have installed an SCOM driver for your uh, telescope mount then you can just select your uh, your driver that you use and then uh, of course fire capture will connect to your mount and uh, yeah when you have a camera that has guiding capabilities and you have a connection or uh, yeah like a cable from your uh, guide cam to uh, which is also your imaging cam uh, to your telescope mount then this allows you to auto guide you can of course also install or and, and use other hardware together with fire capture as well so when you look at the hardware section you can not only connect your mount but also when you have an auto focuser or when you have a filter wheel then you can actually use these menus to set uh, set your filter wheel and your focuser uh, to work together with fire capture so let's move on to one of the main features of uh, the floating menu you can see here in fire capture when you look at the control section yeah you can just uh, move the sliders around so just left click and drag the sliders around so you can adjust the gain setting uh, which you which i just did and you can also see that uh, you can just uh, adjust the exposure time of course and the gamma setting and uh, I want uh, you to uh, be aware of uh, this extra button on the left, uh, the bottom left of the control section. When you click on the little radar, which also says uh, more, then you can uh, even adjust uh, more stuff. So when you click on that, you can also adjust the brightness with which you uh, see the target, uh, in this case the moon. And you can also adjust the red and blue uh, U setting. So uh, yeah, there's a, there are a lot of options that you can use in order to uh, yeah to make a more pleasing uh, picture or to get a more pleasing picture before you are actually going to record uh, to make a video out of it or uh, store some images. And uh, yeah, when you are going to make a video, it's very interesting to uh, to have this option, the USB traffic setting. This can be adjusted. And I actually uh, had to use this. I had to lower the number in the USB traffic section for my ZWO camera uh, because I noticed that some of the frames would get dropped when I was recording um, uh, 
uh, making a video out of, uh, in this case, the moon. So uh, I have uh, put the USB traffic setting to about 45, and uh, this helped uh, for me to capture all of the frames, to record all of the frames that I was getting with fire capture. So this is just a little tip. And uh, also, when you have a camera that has cooling, you can just click on target temperature and set your temperature that you want to use. And also when you click on the bottom right the button of the control section, you can see that there are some preset uh, exposure times and they are related to uh, the, yeah, the, the planet or the sun uh, or the moon that you want to capture. So you can click on one of those presets and for instance now it uh, shows you an exposure time of one second. And uh, yeah, when you use that on the moon, of course, uh, the moon will be completely washed out. But then by reselecting the moon again, um, and uh, yeah, actually here, when you reselect the moon again, you see that uh, the preset is between 1 and 10 uh, milliseconds, am I, if I'm, I'm correct. So um, yeah, this helps you, of course, to uh, already have some kind of indication of what the correct uh, exposure time should be uh, on a particular uh, object that you want to image. So let's move on to the next tip. So the seventh tip is about capturing those frames. And you can see when you click on limit, then you have actually in the capture section, when you click on limit, you have actually a couple of very uh, interesting defaults here. So you can uh, click on the number of seconds that you want to uh, capture uh, a sp specific object, or you can select uh, the number of frames that you want to capture. And also, uh, yeah, when you click, click on uh, AVI, you can see that there are uh, different file formats in which you can, of course, save your uh, video in this case. And uh, yeah, just uh, when you then click on play, then you can see that uh, Fire Capture will start recording uh, all of those frames. In this case, we have set a limit to 500 frames. So it will then just start collecting those frames and it will give, uh, give you an update on how much uh, gigabytes of space you have left on your hard drive, as you can see. Um, and also it shows you uh, whether or not you have sufficient uh, uh, memory to uh, capture all of those frames in the ROM section. So uh, when you, uh, for instance, when you would see that uh, the, uh, the memory, the ROM memory will be very low or gets very low, then it might be useful to uh, adjust the USB traffic slider to a lower uh, value. Uh, I did that and uh, that uh, solved my problem basically. So uh, yeah, and you can see here that we are now at 250 frames. So let's fast forward to uh, 500 frames and let's get into the eighth tip. Yeah, once you have captured all those beautiful frames, of course, you want to save those frames in the correct output folder. And I forgot to show you earlier on. So in the settings section, you also have a, a, under the capture uh, heading, you have settings. And uh, you can then here, you can define the output folder uh, in which you want to save your video or your images. And you can play around here a little bit because you can also auto create uh, subfolders. I'm never a fan of this actually. And uh, yeah, you can click on uh, what kind of information you want to include in the, the name of the file. Do you want the object name, for instance, in the file and so on. Uh, and also you can uh, uh, look at the date and the time format. Uh, or you can change it. So uh, yeah, uh, you can here select the out folder and the, the format in which your files and your, uh, your videos are being saved. Uh, and with that, let's go to the final tip. So yeah, the final, uh, the ninth and final tip that I wanted to show you is that you can also create time lapses with fire capture as well. So uh, when you look at the capturing screen and you click on that clock on the timer button, basically, you will get to the screen. And uh, yeah, it's very simple actually. So you can set uh, a delay. Uh, for instance, if you want a delay of five seconds in between uh, pictures, you can just uh, simply put a five in the delay box. And then uh, let's uh, say that we want a limit of about 60 seconds. Um, so when we click on that, that would mean that for every five seconds, Fire Capture will take uh, an image of, uh, of the, the object 
And uh, yeah, it will do that for 60 seconds. So in this case, it started at zero. So it will create 11 frames in total. And you see this progress bar also. So I think this would be really, really nice if you want to take a time-lapse video, for instance, of a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse. Uh, this would be the way to do it. So hi folks, we're at the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And uh, of course, I hope to see you in one of my other videos on my Astrophone channel. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And I want to wish you, of course, clear skies. Bye bye.